What's going on, YouTube? Back once again in the shed. Finally. <clears throat> yes, because I've disappeared for a week. <laughs> okay. Before I rattle on, I will put a time, slap, time stamp. If you don't want to listen to my personal babbling on, then skip there and you shall find your review. No hard feelings felt, but if that's how you, if you want that, and you want to skip my my waffling, then fair dues. Skip to the time stated. Okay, <clears throat> boy, rabble on. I just want to say about a good bit of news. I'm a bit of a cheapskate in some respects, <laughs> and regarding my pipes, I don't know. I just can't let myself spend a large amount of money on a pipe in case I spend like a hundred plus quid on it and it smokes like a bag of rubbish so all the pipes I buy are generally you know uh, the, the name's gone out of my head estate pipes that's what I was trying to think of most of my pipes are estate pipes so I buy them and I bought for 20 quid three different pipes um, one you've seen, it was like a Meerschaum shaped pipe, a Meerschaum lined, um, and it's got club and like a diamond. I got another mad pipe with it, I think it's clay, I'm not sure, but I'm cleaning it so I have to dig it out. But I got this, All right? So 20 quid for them all, and this is only a bloody Salvinelli. I mean, it's not like one of the really expensive Salvinelli's. It's obviously one of the cheap ones of the line, but I was well chuffed. <laughs> I've got to do a bit of work on the uh, on the stem still, but yeah, Salvinelli. I spent under 20 quid for it, so can't complain, can I? But yeah, that's uh, I just wanted to get out of the way because I'll probably forget. And I'm smoking some uh, Gareth and Hogarth rich dark, rich dark spring dew, was known as honey dew, I think, wasn't it? And I left a stinger in it. So, on to the uh, bad news, I guess. One, I got bit on the face by something. I and it's, it's gone down now, but I had this big lump on my face and it was itching like how bit by um, a gnat or a mozzie or something. But yeah, that's sort of sort of funny bad stuff. But some people already know. I've written some of the comments, but someone quite close to me at heart has uh, passed away he wasn't blood related but he may as well have been and anyway I'll try and keep this short because most of you probably don't want to listen to it but to me the guy was a good guy and I'll tell you why When, if, if you watched any of my videos from before and I talk about I was a bad boy and then I was a good boy and one of the comments I made when I was telling that story was you know I got out I got a job well how this happened was in 2007 I was sent to prison for a, a two year prison sentence got out let out in the like February I can't remember what month I went in but I know I spent that year's Christmas in rehab so I've come out so that must have been 2008 so in 2009 I come out of rehab and I started doing bits of cash and arm work was through this guy that's passed away and you know I did the thing that most addicts do quite often as I ended up relapsing and uh, obviously he's been ringing me trying to say, you know, where are you? We're giving you work. And he ended up coming around my flat and he's knocked on the door and I've let him in and the place is all over the place. And, you know, there's paraphernalia everywhere. 
And I've literally just sort of like sobbed into my hands saying, I'm sorry, Tim, I've, I've mucked up, I've relapsed, I, I'm, I'm doing it all again, you know? And at that point, most people would have walked away, brushed their hands, I mean, you know, while you're doing that, you're on your own. My own mother was like that. I won't get nothing from no one. But he went away, spoke to the owner of the company, who was his uncle. And then came back to me and basically said, we knew about your past when we took you on. We know that you've had struggles, but you've never let us down. You've always been on the mark when you come to work. So as long as you can promise not to bring any of that shit into work and stop, you know, there's a job there for you. Full-time job. So I took him up on that. And what ended up happening was, is that sort of gang mentality that I had of like, you know, putting all my fucking time and energy into like turning over the illegal gains just to buy more drugs and party more and do you know what I mean? My the 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 soul and the anger and my my you know will to do that all got refocused into this company. And I was so thankful to them for giving me that chance that you know, I never took a day sick. I was there. I was doing the work. I was making sure that got, you know what I mean? And I quickly rose up through it. And that point changed my direction for my life. I honestly think if I hadn't had that chance, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd probably either be in prison, rehab or dead. The only three viable outcomes from the life that I was living. So, you know, I really feel thankful to the guy And he passed away. And the thing is, he was a bit of a funny character. He was an older bloke, late 60s. He had decided that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't chasing women anymore. He was like, I'm not getting another relationship. He owned his own three-bedroom house, did his work, and he was just, like, earning enough to get to retirement. And, um, you know, he was happy to go and play a game of golf now and then, go to the pub, get a pint of cider and play pool and go home and go to work, and that was what he was about, you know, but he also, you know, he knew my dad before he died as well, they used to be best mates when I was born, so, you know, I, he's been around, I've seen him around, and, you know, he was like, all, like an adopted uncle, as it were, you know, as kids, we were like, yeah, whenever he came round, but I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for him, and because he was a bit of a loner, he would disappear and he'd do his own thing and then he would turn up and pop round and say hello and disappear again. Well, he disappeared and everyone just thought it was normal Tim. He'd turn up, he might have gone up north to visit his mum. Nah. He'd passed away in his bed and he led there two months before anyone... <clears throat> before anyone... came to... Uh, before anyone really pushed it far enough to go and, you know, get the police to check. And because he owned his own house, they were like, we're not, we haven't got powers to go in there. So it just, it was just messy, man. He didn't deserve that. So he didn't deserve that. <clears throat> okay. So, anyway, I've been putting it on myself to, uh, well, not myself, everyone's been doing their bit, but I'm trying, making sure he gets a good send off. Tim Rose. In some respects, he was more of a dad to me than my own dad was. So anyway, I've waffled on for 10 minutes about that. I'm sorry. But I, I don't know. Maybe getting it off my chest will help me feel a little bit better. But 
they haven't said when the funeral is yet because I think you know you can imagine the body being left there in one of the hottest summers since 1972 or uh, 76 as whoever said life's a bitch sometimes and how things work out they ain't fair So anyway, I guess I'm just trying to say it didn't just disappear. It's it's you know it's hit me quite hard this one, and it's took you know just been times where I just didn't want to do anything. So long. I'll meet you in the great next to the great pool table in the sky when my time comes. Meet him there with my dad. Anyway, for those that just want the reveal, here we go. Today we are reviewing the Lakia. Roasted nut. Yeah. Don't worry, I have got a menthol lined up, but I want to do it on a menthol Monday. Because I believe it deserves the full works. So, that will be up on Monday. So, roasted nut. Again, I got it in a 9 gram uh, tap tin. They're not bad. They look like the sort of personal Gowarth ones. Yeah, that the bigger tap box. But it's it's identical to them, but just more cheaply made, in all honesty. That's the only difference. I find they work pretty much the same. Not really anything to grumble about. It's just the uh, rubber feels a bit softer and plastic feels a bit cheaper but the thing that they do do good is when you get the tapped in it's covered in clean like in film you know it's sealed in a plastic so you have to crack it open which i think is a banging good idea i think if all tap boxes came like that people wouldn't grumble as much about them because it would at least keep them fresh so i think that's something other companies should think about but there you go so let's crack into her and see what she's saying shall we um so to look at it is it's a lighter chocolatey brown um like a light dairy milk sort of chocolate um the grind is Fairly fine, I would say. And moisture. It's below medium, but not dry. So there's a little bit of moisture in there, but there's not tons. But there's enough that it still clumps up a bit. But it's very smooth and silky and a bit dusty. But yeah, it will clump up. So, let's jump into the tin note, shall we? Ooh. Yeah. Nutty. That's what it smells of. It does smell like roasted nuts, you know, like when... You go to the pub and you get a little packet of nuts and you crack them open. <laughs> Smells like that. And there's no, I can't pick up any tobacco in it. It just smells of nuts. So <laughs> let's jump into the bumps and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it off the old box car. See, you've got like B 
big clumps and lumps coming out of it, but then they just break up into nice little fine powder. Right, bit of a burn, bit of a sharp burn. Um, yeah, so you do get a bit of a burn, and the burn sits there a little bit as well, but it does fade, it doesn't stay forever, but, and you get, you do, you get a strong scent of roasted nuts, I think they've done quite a good job of nailing that. It almost want to say, I almost want to say it smells salty, but it's also got a bit of a butteriness. Yeah, quite nice, <laughs> quite nice. I'm going to say it's got a good bit of nicotine in it. In all honesty, I haven't long woke up, but I can feel the nicotine already sort of kicking in. So I don't think it's like knock you off your seat high, but there's a good bit in there. And it goes up your nose quite well. Um, it doesn't feel foreign in my nose, you know, like sometimes when you, I find it quite a lot with sort of confet, confet, com, food type snuffs, confectionery, I think I said that right, but them types of snuffs, I quite often I find they feel heavy in your nose. But this, not too bad. It sits there quite nice. It doesn't feel foreign. It doesn't feel like it's dripping right now, but I think it will want to drip eventually. Again, I can't say I'm getting too much of the tobacco note through. But it's very, it's a very strong upfront flavouring. You know, it's not one of them where you take it and you've got to really home in to find that little bit of whatever it is. This is like, boom, kick the door open, shotgun in your face, filled with roasted nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um... It's, I'm, I'm not going to give it a, um, I'm not going to give it a seal of approval, but it's definitely, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely good, but not great. It's definitely in that sort of area. And by not great, I mean it's not quite tickling my fancy. Like, it's okay, and I use it. It's kind of like a nice little novelty to it, but it's not something I would use all the time. And I don't think it's one, like... It wouldn't be the first one that I pull out. Like, when I've got my little bag of snuffs and the new snuff user comes around and I'm trying to show them... This would probably be like, you know, maybe the third few that I pulled out all the, the, yeah, probably about third down. I'd open it up, pull out three of my favourites and then second favourite. So this would probably come out in that second or third group, you know, if I wanted to show off what snuffs could do. It's not bad. So it's good, but not great. That is where I will sit on it. Um... I haven't really been able to pick up too much of the Lackier's um, tobacco scent 
in the ones that I've done so far. So I might have to have a dig around and find one where it's there's no flavourings on it. But if you love roasted nuts, then I think you're going to love this. So it's definitely worth you giving it a go. And it's also worth the old, you know, give it a try. No reason not to. It's not terrible, but I mean, it's not my favourite. That's all I'm saying. It's good, but not great. That's all I got for you. So, as I said, hopefully I didn't ramble too much in the beginning. Um, oh, I do want to say thank you to Urban Fritz. Because he sent me a box with a load of snuffs in, which a lot of them were menthols, which was really handy. Because, you know, in my box that's full of the snuffs that I bought, for a big part of that, I weren't really too keen on menthols. So there was a lot more of non menthols than menthols. So it was great to get a bunch of menthols to help pack up my library of what I've got to do in the future. So, yeah. Thank you, mate. I do appreciate that. I meant to say it a couple of videos ago, I think, but things just went over my head. But thank you, Urban Fritz, for that. I really appreciate it. And Rich as well. I'm always thankful to you, buddy. He sent me a few bits that may or may not be coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We shall see, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. So... Hopefully I haven't forgot anything and remember to tap, pinch and toot because that's three ingredients to your enjoyment and your enjoyment is all I've got for you. So remember to come back to the shed and until then, everything's back to normal and I shall bid you farewell. Mm -hmm.